So almond paste, what is it? It's literally a paste made of almonds and sugar, and it is commonly used in so many different types of desserts. Uh, shocker alert, I'm gonna be teaching how to make those later. <laughs> so, but first we need to make almond paste, and I'm gonna show you why you should be making it instead of buying it. Save that money, people. When I was in pastry school, I used almond paste for the first time and I had no idea what it was. It's, I tasted it by itself and I was just like, ooh, sweet almonds, like, you know, but when you put it in things, it's delicious. It's a really great thing to use in a lot of classic French recipes, Italian, German, like pretty much everybody except for the USA uses almond paste all the time. If you come across a recipe like Frangipan, which we might be making later, <laughs> you uh, need to buy almond paste. You can buy like a little tube of this at the store. This costs $8 for seven ounces. That is crazy expensive. You can buy a slightly larger tub off of Amazon. Um, this is one pound. It's like $8 a pound. What is in almond paste? Like what's it made of those? Like what's this magical expensive ingredient? There is none. There's no reason for it to be this expensive. If you look on the back, the ingredients are almonds, sugar, glucose, which is basically corn syrup, and water. Is water $8 a pound? Like, what is the deal here? So we're gonna make our own almond paste, and I'm gonna show you how easy it really is. Okay, so the main ingredient in almond paste is almonds. I got mine in the bulk section from Winco, and they were like $5 a pound. So super inexpensive, but you do have to grind them yourself. You can also use almond flour. So I have almond flour here ready to go. Just kind of save myself a step of grinding. And it's about the same price because I buy my almond flour in bulk from uh, Costco. But if you're just gonna buy like a little small bag of almond flour, it's probably gonna be super expensive and you're not gonna save yourself any money. So you wanna take the route of grinding up your own almonds. Okay, so we have our almond flour here. This is 14 ounces. You can definitely half this or quarter it however much almond flour you need for your recipe. All right, so this is gonna go super quick. We just have a little bit of water, three ounces of water, eight ounces of sugar, and then we have four ounces of honey, or you can use corn syrup. Um, I think the honey adds a nice flavor to it, but if you're not a fan of honey, or if you just straight up don't have any, don't have to use it. And we just wanna boil that until the sugar's dissolved and clear. Super easy. All right, so when I was researching different almond paste recipes, quite a few of the ones that I saw and the one that I made in pastry school all required egg white. Um, the thing about egg white though is that you're not necessarily cooking almond paste every single time. So especially when you're making like marzipan or um, certain things that use almond paste, you don't cook it. So some people have problems with there being egg white in there. And as far as I can tell, there's no difference between using egg white and corn syrup as a binder um, or honey. So why not just use the corn syrup and the honey? It might not be like super traditional, authentic almond paste, but in my opinion, I would rather use corn syrup and honey than egg white. The other thing is if you use egg white, the almond paste has a much shorter, uh, shelf life. You can only use it for as long as the egg white is still fresh, which isn't very long. So if you use corn syrup or honey, the almond paste will last much longer in the refrigerator. You can freeze this for up to six months, but really like, why not for longer? <laughs> All right, that's boiling. So it's done, so easy. So I have my ground up almonds in here. Put our lid on, I'm gonna put this on low. And then we're just gonna drizzle our hot syrup into the ground up almond flour until it forms a paste. So this should be like a thick ball when it's all ready to go. So if it's too loose, this is like not pasty enough. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour into it. I have a feeling that's because it was almond flour and not ground up almonds because the first time I made this with ground up almonds, it was perfect. So I have my almond paste pretty much ground up. It's still a little bit sticky. I'm gonna add it into my bowl here. See, it's kind of it's kind of loose still. It should it should hold its shape. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra flour 
until it's a, a, a stiffer paste. So just be aware that you might need to add more flour or if it's too stiff, you can add more water. Just like maybe a tablespoon, maybe a teaspoon at a time. So I'm just gonna fold that in. I mean, if you had the arm strength, you could totally do this whole situation by hand, but like, that's not me. <laughs> so this looks correct here. It's holding its shape. It's not oozing. It is gonna be very sticky though. So that's what the butter is for. So when I make the almond paste, I do notice that it's just not as finely textured as the stuff that you buy commercially. So, I mean, that is one reason to buy it, is it's just gonna be a finer texture. But I feel like when you're baking it, it doesn't matter. It's totally okay. So when you first touch this, it's like super duper sticky. You take a little bit of the butter, just gonna work that in there. And this just takes away the stickiness. Make sure you wait for your almond paste to cool down a little bit before you knead in the butter. Otherwise, it'll just turn into a really soppy, melty mess. I'm just gonna let this cool down a little bit. All right, so when you knead in the butter, it just kind of makes it all come together and it's not sticky anymore. So it's still, it still kind of feels very slightly sticky to me, but okay. I want you to think it's weird or that you did something wrong. But you should be able to roll it into a log, like so. I'll wrap this and put this into the fridge just like this because it's easier to cut into pieces to then use in recipes. So this was one pound of almond flour. This makes almost two pounds, so it's for about $7. So that's pretty good savings right there. It's not quite as fine as the store-bought stuff. So this is our store-bought almond paste, which is a little bit firmer um, just because it's been resting, but you, there's like absolutely no grains in this. And the stuff that we made is a little bit grainier. It's gonna be totally okay for a recipe though. So this is freshly made and this has been um, chilling in the fridge for about a week. And you can see how much firmer it is compared to this and that's store bought. So it definitely firms up and gets smoother over time. So um, a lot of people ask what's the difference between almond paste and marzipan because they're both made with almonds and sugar. And uh, I do have a recipe for marzipan on the website as well. It's very similar. But if you look on the box, marzipan, almond candy dough, the in first ingredient is sugar and the second ingredient is almonds. And it says 28% almonds. And then on the almond paste, the first ingredient is almonds, 45%, and the second ingredient is sugar. So to me, that means that marzipan is just sweeter and it's a little bit of almonds, but mostly sugar. So this feels very similar, but like it's not as soft, it feels stiffer. Like this feels really soft and this, you kind of, I have to press a little bit harder. So that makes sense that the almond paste would be softer because you're gonna be using this as a filling or incorporating it into other things to use as for recipes. And this, you're literally just gonna be like shaping it like you would Play-Doh or fondant. Make these little things. I don't know what this is. <laughs> so this is the marzipan. It's very sweet. It kind of has the consistency of a caramel. It's a little bit chewy. Very sweet though. I don't even know if I could taste almond. It's good though. All right, and this is the almond paste. Much softer. Has not really any chew to it at all. Mm. This to me tastes really good because it, I can definitely taste the almonds. It's not super sweet and it's not chewy. Kids would for sure like this better. Like to me, this just tastes like almonds. That's very kind of, very slightly sweet and this just tastes like sugar. <laughs> This is not sweet at all. Like even though we put that poured syrup in there, it tastes mostly just like almonds. So out of the commercial almond paste, the one that's homemade is not very sweet whatsoever. It just tastes like ground up almonds. Very good, mm, good job Liz. <laughs> the one that I just made, you can really taste the honey actually it adds a little extra dimension of flavor. Similar to like you'd be using brown sugar instead of white sugar, it actually imparts a flavor. So the honey acts as corn syrup and keeps things nice and soft, but I can actually, mm, that's really good. 
All right, so now that you know everything there is to know about making almond paste, make sure you hit that subscribe button, new videos on Tuesday, and keep an eye out for upcoming videos using almond paste. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be delicious. I'm Liz Merrick. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. I haven't had lunch. <laughs> no. I was gonna say, stop eating it. <laughs>